Now, I'm noticing that you like your drums low, like you said. You like to have your drums low, beefy, and fat sounding. Now, do you do that because it's the style of music you're playing in your band? Do you ever get a chance to tune your drums completely differently? Or is this kind of just your go-to all the time tone and sound? Yeah, this is my go-to sound. Uh, you know, in the studio, there's a lot of, of, you know, other stuff to experiment with. The options are endless in the studio. So uh, if I were to want something that were to be a little bit higher, I would just throw up Again, higher toms. Tom or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that brings me to volume and tone and stuff. You guys do some really big gigs. Mm-hmm like arena size, 10,000 people, and you said you do some small gigs as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're talking about house of worship settings, and so a lot of drummers play in small churches, mm -hmm. probably with a you know, small congregation. So how do you go about adjusting your playing from a big, huge venue to a smaller venue? Do you change anything? Do you, you know, adapt yourself to that situation in that room you're in? Mm -hmm. And do you have any advice for drummers who are playing in a small setting that, that might have to play quietly yeah. and, and not you know, blow out the ears of... Grandma on the front row, that kind of thing. It's very true. Uh, I guess the the two main things I run into with volume is um, snare drum and cymbals. Obviously, cymbals are probably the worst thing to the human ear. Uh, you know, this close. You know, from me to you. So um, they're you know just crazy loud. So coming up with a way to control that sound is definitely a part of what I have to do on a weekly basis. Um, and I don't know if there's any secret to it uh, other than having complete self-control and being able to control how you hit a cymbal compared to how you hit a snare drum compared to how you hit a floor tom compared to how you hit a kick drum. So I actually approach every single drum differently which I don't know if I knew that about myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done videos about this exact subject before, and I, and I say it and when I give lessons and things like that, is that you know, you're responsible for this instrument. Mm -hmm. So it is up to you, exactly like you said, to play a certain thing quieter than the other or harder than the other and make it musical. Mm -hmm. And if you have to play quieter for a certain situation, you just have to play quieter mm -hmm. and still be as musical as you possibly can. So that, that was a great expl explanation you just gave. Your cymbals you have up here are big. You have 16-inch hi-hats. They look like you have two crash cymbals for hi-hats. Do you do crashes. that normally? <laughs> it's a great uh, sound. I've done it many times. I think it's fantastic. It's a good way to experiment. I've basically found uh, the sound that I'm looking for everywhere except for the hi-hats. And okay. this kind of showed up as a joke right um because these are actually 18s oh they're 18s i'm sorry yeah and they were just sitting you know in a pile because i had a bunch of 16 inch crashes like you know that we were looking at i was just looking for a sound something dark um you know and not so abrasive like 14s not so little i needed something to take up some more space just stuff like that so as a joke i threw these in the bag and took them on the road to a trip and I absolutely fell in love. And I don't know if this is as good as it gets, but uh, I'm still kind of on the search, but it's definitely revolved around this. It's, it's gonna come up. I'm looking at maybe getting some 17 legacies and then going from there. If this beats that out, then I'm just gonna stick with this. And do you normally go for the dark, warm tone in your cymbals? I think, that, I think uh, that's an acquired taste, right. but yes, it took me a long time to get there. Um, I've played, you know, every kind of expensive and cheap symbol basically there is. And I really ended up with um, dark and very thin. These are, these are all rides, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just looking for uh, something that's dark and explosive. And it just turns out that they're thin. You know, I didn't know what makes my sound my sound, but um, I was really looking for something that was multifaceted that I could play um, that has, you know, a low dynamic, a medium dynamic, a, you know, kind of high dynamic, and then a loud dynamic. And uh, man, these, the, the dark, thin stuff really does that for me. Sure. And of course, uh, you know, the, the bigger they are, uh, man, I don't even know. They just, I guess the darker they are, the lower tone they are, the bigger they are, the lower tone they are. So, uh, one way to one one thing that I try to really focus on when I control the drums is I try to play the toms and the kick uh, very consistently, mainly loud. So I try to go 
for loud on the toms and loud on the kick, and then I try to control everything else around that. So it's, so it's really hard to play a cymbal quiet and then jump to a tom and play it loudly and then go back to playing quietly, you know, when you're trying to crash out that cymbal. Um, and then on the snare drum, um, a trick I like to use is if I need to play a, a really quiet snare drum, I'll actually still rim shot, but I'll move it from the center of the drum, which is like full volume, and I'll just kind of pull it back a little bit to the side and, um, and try to just get a nice big attack, but lose a lot of that overall volume. So, so this would be like full volume here. Now I'm gonna go for something more like this. So, so um, I'm just gonna try to get that same attack, but and it, and I can still play it just as hard, but it's gonna give me less overall volume. So, you know, in a, and then when it comes to the hi hat, I'm still gonna be aggressive on the hi hats. I'm gonna play loud. I'm gonna play aggressive, and then when it comes to the cymbals, I'm gonna try to lay off. And then when it comes to the toms and kick, I'm gonna play loud and aggressive. So it. Um, so this will just be kind of loud uh, for everything. So. It's not a whole lot of difference, but it actually is. So instead of wailing on this thing, just be able to get it to that point where it starts to wash and then try to keep it there. And uh, that's basically uh, what I do with, when I'm trying to stay off the cymbals. And then in church, I try to stay away from washing those all together. Try to play mostly on the hats. And then when you take it to the ride, uh, this is one of the gongiest uh, sounding things that you can wash on. So I try to keep it, I try to aggressively play the, on the tip of the stick as hard as I can. So it keeps it away from uh, just overbearing everyone in the audience. So a little bit of example would just be like this. I wanna get that cymbal washing just to the point where it starts washing without overtaking everything. And so that's how I control those guys. So I just try to get it to the point where it starts to wash and then um, just keep it there without overbearing the entire mix and the entire everything going on. Even though uh, I get a lot of complaints from my sound guy always telling me to play the cymbals quieter. Uh, and now I understand why, because it's, uh, it gets a little bit out of control sometimes. Sure. Uh, and then as for just like you know, nail and assemble. Uh, I like to, you know, keep that at a medium, you know, at a good loud volume. You need to get that, you need, that guy needs to explode. I need some explosion out of the cymbal. So, um, you know, if you're not washing it, then uh, if you can, what you don't want to do is crash on every, you know, you don't want to crash every four bars. You just want to, you want to put your crashes in a good spot where they're effective and then you can really lay into them without it, you know, causing problems everywhere so if you that's what I like about these the thinner symbols is they'll give you that explosion and then just get out of the way pretty quick so that you can you know so that the mix comes back and you're not um, just swamping everything so um, you know for me that just looks like this
So that gives me a good explosion and then just try to get them out of the way really quickly. <laughs> 